Two into cleaning cars then originally. Um, he's, he's got a top up mod, but he, he helps me on, on his days off. Um, it's both of our little venture. Um, I worked for my dad for five or six years doing um, tire fitting. Oh, okay. Um, but I've always really wanted to go out on my own and do some work for myself. Right. So. We were kind of thinking of ideas of what we could do and all, all stuff like that. And yeah. I did go through a patch where I was taking quite good care of my own car before someone smashed into it. Right. Um, so yeah, I have a mobile wallet and in here. Yeah. And I started looking for, I started looking on YouTube to see how much it would be <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. And then I got, in, I got stuck into watching your videos. Okay. And I seen all your set up and you know the early videos that you made of your van set up and all that sort of uh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I kind of kind of filtered it in for a couple of months while I was still working at the tire shop because I worked for my dad, so I said it were okay. And then the tire shop started going under, didn't it? And there were a week where it didn't pay me a wage, it didn't even pay me half my wage. Right. I just thought, you know what, it's just time to go, just time to yeah. go on my own. So, I had, a, I had a month or so of <laughs> practicing, you know, filtering in family's cars and, okay. you know, family's friends of cars and stuff like that. And then when, when that happened with a way, I just thought, right, it's time to go on, it's time to just get out and just see what happens, really. Yeah. And I just started off just doing, I learned the rules from watching videos on YouTube and a bit of research to make sure that I could wash the cars properly and safely. And I just started off really simply and just doing like standard cleans and you know, not yeah. too not too extravagant. Bulleting inside and giving it a wash on the outside and then picking up a few more tips and doing a little bit more and a little bit more. Yeah. That's what it's all about, just getting started. Yeah. A lot of people say to me, oh well no not not as many but my key advice is just get started. Yeah. Pick up and get stuck in, jump into the deep end. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, over time, you, you, you eventually abroad in your services and yeah, you um, get an aid yourself. Yeah. Um, simply. Do you but, find you die off a lot in winter? Put a pallet inside? Um, <laughs> no, January. January, January, February is sometimes a little bit iffy. So I guess that is actually the peak of winter, to be mm. fair, nowadays. So yeah, it does a bit. December's always good because people are like, oh, I want to get my car clean for Christmas. But as soon as January hits, um, yeah, the last, since being in business, I think January's, January's a bit quiet. February starts to pick back up again. March, normally back to the way, back to the ones before. Um, but again, as you become more established, I guess those two months will start to become more fills the more people that mm -hmm. know about you. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the same with most industries. January, January quite month, February, start to get back on your feet again. Christmas, isn't it? December's usually surprisingly good. I'm, I'm usually, I get to Christmas, it's like, come on out. How on earth did I just remain Yeah, busy, you can just imagine the amount of people that are travelling at the family's houses and stuff, can't you? And yeah. the car to look lovely and, yeah. I suppose December could be quite a good month, yeah. 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 I just I just want to learn how to do things properly, mate, so to be honest, I've not even picked up a machine polish yet. Mm. So Okay, fair enough. I just I want to learn how to do it properly instead of just yeah. packing people's cars, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we had one yesterday, didn't we? We had to stop straight away and ring up uh, Volkswagen to yeah. find out what material seats were made out of and stuff. Really? It felt like suede. Okay. And we just started to, we just about to start wet washing seats. Right. Uh, we better stop here. We rang Volkswagen to find out what it was, and it's the fake suede stuff. Fake suede. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, wet back, I guess, it, oh, I don't think I've ever wet packed Alcantara or 
Yeah, that's yeah. what it's called. Alcantara, yeah, that's another wet pack. It's so you clean it the same. I don't know about wet packing. It, it says, it, it depends on where we read it, we were researching it, and someone said you can machine wash that material, and someone said don't wet it too much. So what we did was half that material and half just normal. Yeah. We did the, the, the normal bit as normal as deep as we would, and with that one we just went just straight over it, not letting too much water go in from it. Right. And it turned out fine, it dried straight away with how warm it was, and it was so oh, Okay. Yeah, Do you have a George? George Huber? Yeah, same as that one. That one. Because those, um, the things that come with it, these ones, uh, you know the, um, the handheld yeah. suction thing? Yeah. That. So, like, some of them have got sharp edges. Yeah. Hello, George, do details. That's good for me getting no in the I said to me, say, you got sharp on this, didn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'll uh, catch it because I won't. Yeah, it's so it's not nice. Just put it on. Okay, guys. Um, right, I need to. I need to sort the diary out for this week. I've got, I've got various people coming to me. I haven't really got anyone in the diary yet. Any chance I'll probably. Even just talking to the boss. Days and times when people are getting called. So. Um, <coughs> I think Friday, I think okay, Friday, so just Friday, Friday afternoon. With a camp in the media, probably have to kill the paper production to lose a sort of a show or anything like that. Yeah, okay, sounds good. Alright mate, cheers. Fuck no. <laughs> They're coming in blusters. You've heard the logic? any of those types, that one, a Samsung, or the generic Android thing. What were you saying about the, um, the charge attachment? About the metal bits on it? Yeah, I've, um, yeah, the triangle bits on the end, I know it's on one set or two sets of fabric seats, wet vacuum, and they left, like, basically score marks yeah. down the one side, so that was the only thing that was wearing me about doing Alcantara with mm. that wet back thing. It's quite annoying, really. Bit of a design flaw. I had to put tape all the way around um, the the inside of the, the metal bit where it sucks all the water up. Yeah. Um, on the edge, maybe even getting a plastic mould or something on it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a bit of a tricky. shame, isn't it? It gets very sharp on the end, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. See some of these other American guys that are doing their wet backing videos, sucking out like filthy crap out of seats. They're not using the jaws, they're using a different machine. And their suction bit it looks quite similar, but it's just completely plastic. There's no metal on there. Right. And there's no sharp corners, which, yeah, that was a bit of a design flaw for George. But go to the best. I guess go to the best. Yeah. Where do you go for a piss? <laughs> All the way round. How wet? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, all the way round. Wet time desperate. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, right, so... Take this as a customer's car, so... I mean, I guess it kind of is a customer car to me, but... Obviously washed, decontaminated, it's been clay barred, it's been fully cleaned, so let's say, for example. And obviously we're just happy to get stuck in with the paint correction side of things. Um, yeah. So, first step. First step, what's it going? I do this on every single training day. I lose this paint up gauge. Time of the time. <laughs> Little blue paint up gauge if you see it. Blue? How big is it? Oh, it's not very big. It's, uh, oh, there it is. It's like a blue. It's mainly blue. So, I mean, first step is. I mean, as you say, the average customer is going to want a minor paint correction. I say the average customer, the average customer, going in for a detail. Obviously, you've got your sort of entry level detail, so like a protection detail. 
You then got an enhancement detail, so a single stage machine polish, and then you've got a minor paint correction, two stage machine polish, and obviously you've got a major paint correction, which could be a three or four stage machine polish, and then you've got wet sanding and you know, concourse prep. But the average customer is either going to want one of those first three services, protection detail, enhancement detail, minor paint correction. I, I think I've done one, well, two major paint corrections since being here. But the vast majority have been minor paint corrections, or if not, then the single stage enhancement. So for your average sort of daily cars, particularly when you're getting started, we'll just we'll focus on a two stage uh, to begin with, uh, yeah. two stage minor paint correction. So obviously, you want to um, as a professional. Jeez, that's thick. Three hundred twenty-five. 57. That's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, what's the average? How's this thing spawn? Is your machine book? <laughs> no, couldn't have. I mean, that's just ridiculously high. 150. That, that bonnet's been re, re sprayed. Average, you'd be looking around 150 odd. Let's say between. It might have been re sprayed because someone trashed my car and the. Pull, snap these off, and they act at me car a little bit. Oh, so right. When it went in through the insurance, they might have respread on it. You, you said that, that the other side, which side did we say looked duller than the other? One side. Okay, um, yeah, I mean, bonnet. So, generally speaking, the average depth from the, the paintworks that I've found from car to car that come in here, between 80 to 150, 160, usually the average. Anything over like 200 odds then, it's chances are it's going to be resprayed. But the way that you want to, um, just, just to give you a, a gist of, of the depth of the paintwork to see what, you know, what sort of depth that you've got to play with, um, just to make sure that the cutting stage is going to be fine. Um, so, yeah, just want to measure, measure all of the panels in various different areas. Um, how much can you expect the cut to take off the paintwork? A couple of mil, <laughs> not a mil, a couple of microns. If you're doing a, if you're doing a real good cut, only a couple of microns. But so the reason why you do this, particularly as a professional business, I mean, it takes you five minutes to go around the entire car, maybe five or ten minutes to go around the entire car. Yeah. Let's say, for example, that bonnet was, because the way that that's been resprayed, it's been resprayed really thick. But it can very easily go the other way, and it could be resprayed really thin. Yeah. And say if it is incredibly thin and it's incredibly soft the way that they've, they've sprayed it, um, the paintwork could burn through a lot quicker. Um, and it's, it's without doubt going to react differently to the original paintwork that's on the car. Okay. So, I mean, step one is to figure out what the, because it all should match up, it should tally up together. Particularly with a modern car, all these panels should be very similar in depth. So, uh, I can't remember, 150 to 140, I think we're talking about the same down here, 130 to 150. Yeah. Um, what's too low, what's one way you pull that on, I can't really touch that. Um, what's the lowest, the Evo that I had in, I don't know if you saw that video series, the really oxidised Evo. I didn't see that one. No, oh, that's a good series to watch, that was 60 microns in places, 60 microns, so pretty thin. And it was single stage paint, so obviously when you're polishing it single stage, there's no clear coat, you're polishing the paint, it's just one layer of paint and not primer colour clear. Um, so yeah, that was quite a, um, uh, it was a little bit daunting, but then the owner did say, if you can't machine polish it, I'll be going to get it resprayed, so do what you can. If you burn through, you burn through. Yeah, there was no stress with it.
boots break really soft. You just need to make sure that you know about that panel before you make a stop, because then you can just back off with your polishes, back off with your compounds, and only do what's necessary to that panel to get it looking good, if it's really low. On the other hand, that bonnet, real thick paint, that would be fine. You may react differently to the, to the original factory paintwork, but it's just if it's a little lower on the low side, you just need to make sure that you're aware about it, so that you can just go ahead and caution. So for the sake of, I'd probably spend probably five, 10 minutes getting on the vehicle, measuring the depth of the entire paintwork, getting a gist of what the factory paintwork is like, and then keeping an eye out for any areas that have been resprayed, um, just so you can then proceed with caution. Yeah. Those five or 10 minutes is potentially going to save you. Um, the chances of it happening are slim. But it saves you for those five minutes, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's all part of being a professional, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, this car, we're looking 140 to 160 for the standard paint mode. We've got a nice re-squared door. I thought so. Is it shiny? It's nice. Yeah, no, it's a little measurement. No, this is my own step here. Is that some, uh, is that some work done on this one? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they've done that. I, I, I could expect them doing bonnet when they did it. But if anything, the only door that, that picked up a couple of scratches to what I could see were driver door. And I don't know if they've done onto it. Mm -hmm. As has, yes, all of this side has been painted, bonnet's been painted. The only... that's been painted. Yeah, they've um, they're sprayed everywhere and they've sprayed this complete side, which is quite normal black as well. I don't know if black is difficult to blend, but sometimes instead of spraying one door, so it, because otherwise it will stand out, they'll just spray the entire side. That's what they've done, sprayed that entire side. They've probably sprayed the bumper as well. The bumper would have been because I had a, a big scuff down there. Okay. <laughs> so the only factory paintwork on this is this side, the roof, in the back, in the boot, in the rear bumper probably, I guess, without going too crazy with the paint that's good. Yeah, when, when I had it in, they were correct, they were fixing everything that had happened, but also I had a, there was stuff on it from me that I asked them to sort out as well, and it was somewhere down here, so I don't know if they've just carried it on or something. Yeah, they do often do that. Better to do that than have a couple of panels completely different shades. Yeah. Um, but to be fair, it's got some scratches and stuff on it, and it won't that long ago, so I don't know if it's maybe from previous. Especially down that side. Mm. Oh, no, yes. And the day you've just got to do <coughs> with what you've got. Um, I guess, fortunately for this car, um, all the paintwork is, is really oh. thick. There's not really any cause for concern apart from that respray bit is going to react differently to this original paintwork. Um, well, with that, you can just adjust your um, working style to suit the car, I guess, which you find, simply find out by getting stuck in. Lots of defects. Holograms, it's been machine polished before. Have you machine polished it before? <laughs> I've never, I've never, I've never I haven't picked up a machine polish yet. Ah, right. Have yeah, you? No, I've not used a machine polish yet. Yeah. That's the thing, when they go into the body shop, they get repainted. They obviously buff them out after. Yeah. And typically that's when they'll leave a load of body shop buffer trails and holograms, sandy marks, all what, sorts. What did, what did you mean by holograms, though? Holograms. Uh, there isn't any on this side. Well, I'll see you in a minute. I'll stand out. Pretty bad. Uh, well, holograms are. I know there's some, what's going on there's some down there. 
Oh, the, the way that it catches. So we're not looking at, they're, they're obviously, obviously swirls. They're, I mean, they're mainly paint swirls. You've got a few isolated deeper scratches here. Yeah. This is a hologram. But, like wavy lines. It's where, the, where it picks up the light. It's almost like wavy lines. Oh, right. uh, there. See that one that went across there? I think. Oh, okay. I mean, they're the holograms and then wavy lines. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's essentially what holograms are. So that's just oh, yeah. from someone buffing the paintwork. It just didn't refine it, so it's left an uneven finish to the paint. Right. Um, yeah, so end of the day, car shit needs machine polishing. <laughs> machine polishing, it's all good and well looking at the car. Um, yeah, I guess it's good to have an inspection. Measure your, measure your um, measure the paint, the depth of the paint, all the all the panels that you can. Plastic bumpers you can't measure against plastic. You need a metal surface for that magnet or metal thing to metal paint and it'll measure what you've got. Gives you an indication just to make sure that yes, the car is absolutely fine to machine polish, there's nowhere to be worried about it. It's all original factory paintwork, so therefore it's all gonna react the same. Obviously with this we've found out that that's resprayed, all of that's resprayed. So it is gonna react differently, but it's really thick paint. So just a case of getting used to it, getting stuck in, yeah. seeing what it's gonna to take to get to get the results of the desired finish. Um, yeah, Ford, Ford paint, I say usually is around medium hardness. Your German cars generally are hard, Ford, medium, Japanese, soft. So, again, it's just doing what's necessary to the paintwork. Yeah. Um, depending on what type of service, service you're going to be doing, obviously you've got the enhancement or a minor paint correction on two stage. Generally speaking, this type of car you're either going to be doing protection, enhancement, or minor. So it's all now. It's all about finding the combination that's going to suit the car, um, that's going to give you the finish that you that you need. Yeah. Um, so if I was to do a single stage, uh, oh well, let's let's go through um, the repairs repairs machines quickly, just to give you an introduction to the machines. Um, I recommend getting one of these because um, they're the best. Quite simply, uh, repairs make the best dual action machines in the detailing industry. Um, you've got cheap alternatives, you've got like the Auto Finesse, Auto Finesse DA, um, Meguiar's MTX 320, some or other. You've got various other ones. Just get a good machine to begin with. You're doing it as a business, you want to invest in the right stuff. Uh, and obviously, paint correction, this is going to be your primary tool. Not this one, the other one, but we'll get to that after. This one's a mini Bigfoot, so it's got a three inch, um, three inch pad. So this is just going to, this smaller machine is going to allow you to get into areas like this, yeah. up here, in there. You always really want to be taking the place off just to get more place, but. Sometimes that's a customer, customer requirement, but this machine is going to allow you to get to these slightly smaller bits, whereas the bigger machine with five inch pad, you're going to be getting to all your top flat surfaces, um, but it's going to cover a bit more distance quicker. Not really going to be using this tiny machine all over, you can only use your NHR 15, they call it, um, repairs compounds and polishes. Blue course, um, this is heavy, heavy cutting compound. The green is the medium compound, yellow is the fine, white is the ultra fine. So your compounds, the polishes. Uh, cut the paintwork, polish the paintwork. Uh, other good tools to have, obviously paint up gauge, you can get these for 150 quid on Gene Carver Pump, so definitely recommend to get yourself one of them. Green 3M tape, needs like that. So repairs make um, their repairs own pads. They've brought out a few more different ones now, but just keep things simple because I don't use these new fancy ones. They 
repurposed pads, the white ones, that's the front one. So that's your white, so that obviously matches white and white. Oh, right. Super soft finishing pads. You then got yellow, which is a fine finishing pad. So again, it's a little bit more coarse than this one, but yeah, uh, yellow. They also do a green foam and a blue foam. And the green and blue foam ones are just stay away from it because of crap. They fling foam all over the car. They dust quite a lot. Mm. And they're, 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 they're this honeycomb type foam. So the inside of it is, um, keeps the temperatures down because it can dissipate the heat. But it also just flings off like, like a brace of bits of blue and green foam. I should really have kept two, but I've got them at home, so I'm going to sell them. I must have I've got a load of all this replay stuff that I'm selling because um, it's it, those pads cost about eleven.